Hello and welcome to a book bag extra. I thought I would share a few thoughts uh, about my friend Tobias Hill. I've just received the very sad news that he has died and uh, we go back a long way. Uh, he was a wonderful person and a wonderful mm. writer. I first met him when I was just starting out at Time Out, I think, and I would go to literary parties, uh, bound up to people and say, hi, I'm Susie from Time Out, and they would look over my head for somebody much more important to talk to. And I would always see this tall and very handsome guy also hanging around looking a little bit awkward. I think we were actually introduced by a mutual friend, Sarah Rance, um, but we'd sidle up to each other. I don't know anybody here. And he'd say, I don't know anybody either. And we would always chat and have a bit of a laugh. Um, and uh, at that stage, he, he was a poet uh, rather than a novelist. Uh, he hadn't started publishing novels. But we kept in touch and, you know, pretty soon he um, his career began to take off. He would be surrounded by people at parties, but he would always, he's just one of those people who would always spare time uh, to come and talk to an old friend. You know, some people don't, some people kind of move on and uh, you're not in their life anymore. But Tobias was never like that. He was an absolute gentleman. So I, I dug out, immediately went and dug out a few of his books. Couldn't find them all. His uh, first novel was uh, Underground, I believe, a thriller set around the London Underground. He had this wonderful ability to, to write uh, books that were literary novels, but also had thriller elements. Uh, the Love of Stones, this one here, um, he kind of really hit the big time. I mean, look, this is the this is the picture of him. How gorgeous! Um, <laughs> uh, and I was looking into this. It is a it is a signed copy. I think it's a signed copy. Where to Susie? Best of luck and wishes, Tobias Hill, and uh, in it is the um, I took the invite to the launch you are invited to celebrate the launch of the love of stones at the new Cartier boutique in old Bond Street so I'm pretty sure I went to that um yeah fantastic novel about um he he, he also did lots of research so he'd done tons of research into jewelry um historical jewelry uh Oh, what's it say? Uh, three lives linked by a jewel, the hidden archives of contemporary London, Tokyo and Istanbul, following the trail of a long lost jewel, a brooch of rubies, diamonds and pearls once worn by Queen Elizabeth the uh, first. She's on that. She's on that invite. Um, I mean, he was well traveled. He'd live in he lived in um, he lived in Japan, I believe, for a while. So uh, I have another, I found another book. This is his collection of short stories. You can see the Japanese influence there. Um, but this is really lovely. I found a little postcard from Tobias in it. Hope these are all right. They're all unpublished, except for Magnolia Flowers, which came out in a mag in Scotland. It'll be good to see you on the 24th if you can make it. I did, in fact, make it. And he's drawn a little map um, for, uh, of where he was living uh, near Primrose Hill. Bring anyone who likes sitting around and drinking in gardens, Tobias. So that was uh, rather lovely to see that. Um, and then, you know, I was a literary editor I got sent, this is a proof copy of the cryptographer by the author of The Love of Stones. Um, and I love these proof copies. Following The Love of Stones, Tobias's Hill sales now top 100,000 uh, reviews and features across the national press for this highly rated author, national and local radio coverage and UK author tour. Uh, this is from 2003. There he is again. 
um, with a little letter, a little letter inside. That's that's to me from his from his publicist. Um, his stunning new novel, Anna, a tax inspector for the Inland Revenue, is assigned to investigate the finances of John Law, the incredibly wealthy creator of a new form of electronic currency. Uh, yeah, he was um, in advance of his time, I think, old Tobias. Um, but as I said, he was first known as a poet. He became he became a poet in rev, rev, uh, can't say it poet in residence at London Zoo and wrote a whole collection on that. Um, but I I loved him as a, a poet. I this is something I I must have bought. It's still got the foil sticker on the back. Uh, his collection, his salt collection, not turning chrome and yellow. Nocturne in Chrome and Sunset Yellow. Um, and yet, uh, I mean, he had great titles for poems. The Lighthouse Keeper's Cat, Five Ways of Looking at My Grandfather, The Woman Who Likes Standing Under Trees in the Rain, Nine in the Morning in the Station Bar. They're all great titles, aren't they? But what I was very struck about this was... Uh, his sequence, A Year in London, a poem for every month of the year, January to December. What a great idea. I mean, he really was an absolutely wonderful poet. Um, so I thought, I thought I would be... So, yes, yeah, selected as one of the country's next generation poets, shortlisted for the 2004 Sunday Times Young Writer of the Year named by the TLS as one of the best young writers in the country, one of the leading British writers of his generation. Uh, and he won awards for his poetry. Um, yeah, so I thought I would uh, I would wrap up uh, this little tribute with a reading of one of the poems in the book. It's called Nocturne. I I love a nocturne. I like musical nocturnes. I like poetic nocturnes. So this is a little, a little taste of Tobias, Tobias Hill, nocturne. Full moon tonight and the snow falling as if the moon could shine so bright that it would melt the snow by morning. Chiswick Ayat to Whistler's mooring, Bell Wharf stairs to the embankment, Dark house steps to the barrier building. How far you've walked. Though you've been walking this way so long, you can forget what year it is or where you're going. This is constant, the river's passing. The undertow of its descent, though all around it has been changing. Every minute, the city, nothing if not forever and constant. Some days you can't escape the feeling that all is spent, that you are running out like the Thames into the waste of the scoured North Sea, that there's nothing still to be learnt, or no more learning that you would want to have by heart, having no want left for anything. Eat your heart out, says the lit hoarding upon the bridge by Parliament, the snowflakes dancing and skimmering as they go out, white sparks vanishing into the river's firmament. This is the vein and the heart of it. The Thames at night, the city sleeping under the clock tower's movement, the slow toll of Big Ben foundering up in the white. And all this carving, the generals poised in granite, the dragon skulls and cannon bones of horses rendered into stones the sentinels of kings and queens, the epigraphs of the Ammonites. Are we there yet? Something is saying just ahead, where the dearth of light hides anything it might be doing. Are we there yet? Like a kid whining by the turning in the blind spot you didn't mean to find this evening or any night. You must be leaving. Don't look back now. Pick up your feet and keep walking and keep on walking. I should also say uh, another novel he wrote, The Hidden, uh, wonderful um, literary thriller 
I uh, couldn't find my copy of it, but I've got one somewhere. Um, and that was uh, that's set around an archaeological dig uh, in Sparta that takes on the Spartan ideals. Uh, it's, it's quite a sort of secret history or the Magus-like story. Um, literary thriller, quite gruesome, um, highly recommended like all uh, Tobias's works. So let's keep on reading him. And uh, yes, keep on walking, my good friend, Tobias Hill. Thanks for watching. <laughs>